What is going on everybody? Welcome back to Phones and Drones. So as anticipated, Apple just released iOS 17 public beta for the first time and it is going to be the exact same build that we discussed yesterday. And just to kind of show you guys a couple things, we're going to jump into settings, general, about, and you can see here what we kind of talked about yesterday. What is surprising about this is they re-released beta 3 yesterday with a lower build number than it was prior. This indicates that Apple thought the other build was farther along than this one, but there was something significant that made this build take a step back, but they still felt comfortable enough to release to the general public. Another call out with this build, as you can see now, if you jump into software update, and once this loads up, you know how you can select the developer beta profiles or the public beta. If you jump into public beta and sign up for that instead of developer beta and get a little refresh, you can see it is still up to date. There is no other version to pick. So we'll leave it on developer beta just so we can keep getting that timely. But for the most part now, everything should be coming out within a day or two of the developer betas with the public betas also. So with iOS 17, we're not going to jump in and do a deeper dive of all those features. You guys are probably aware of it at this time, but some of the big ones is obviously standby that we did a whole video on. Public users can now take advantage of this as well. You can turn on standby, have it on always on, the night mode, and if you want it to show notifications, this is now available to any user on that. Widgets, obviously, big piece here are that they are now actionable. They don't have to launch the app to utilize a widget feature. And for instance, if you have something on your lock screen or on your desktop or home screen, I should say, it will utilize it right off the way and you can toggle as needed from those apps. AirDrop now has that new name drop feature. So you can just touch your iPhones together and they will work. You can send your contact card. Same with AirDrop as well. Uh, sending items to and from multiple participants. You don't even have to stay connected to the same network. If you lose connection, it will continue to transfer as well for that. Aside from all that as well, you are getting live voicemail that we've looked at before. FaceTime is now going to support video messaging. Uh, there's a new mood tracking feature. Uh, so yeah, iOS 17 has a lot of new features, a lot that are overhauled and everything as well. So definitely go pick it up if you're looking at picking it up for the public use. You don't have to worry about being a developer anymore. You can now be on the public beta train. So yeah, is it worth it is my question that a lot of people are going to ask as well. I do believe this is stable enough to use in its current form, however, if you follow the channel, you know a lot of our complaints have come in regards to the sacrifice for battery life and the temperature. This baby consistently gets way warmer than when it was running iOS 16, and iOS 16 got warm as it was. So if you can kind of sacrifice battery life to have the newest features and are okay with the device getting a little warmer than what you traditionally have, um, go for it. I've had no other issues. They fix a lot of the main ones, but there is still a laundry list of issues in this build. So yeah, aside from those bugs, let us know, guys. Are you downloading it? Leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you in the next one. Peace.